Good day, welcome to another session of Dentistry and more. Now we are coming to the end part of the oral medicine discussion of the question papers. So in the next chapter we are going to speak about is the bone disease and the fibrosis lesions. The first question as an essay it can be asked is the classification of uh, fibrosis lesions of the oral cavity and also to write in detail about the fibrous dysplasia. So according to Charles A. Warden, in 1985, he has given the classification for fibrosis lesions based on the clinical presentation, histopathology, as well as the radiographic findings. It's divided into fibrous dysplasia and then the dysplastic lesions and rising on the tooth bearing areas. And that's the non hereditary and the hereditary ones, which are enlisted below. And then the fibrosis neoplasm, such as that assigned cementifying fibroma, ossifying fibroma, cement ossifying fibroma, juvenile ossifying fibroma, and then followed by cherubism. When discussing about fibrous dysplasia, you can go through the textbook of oral medicine by Anil Holmes or by textbook of oral medicine by uh, Ravikar and Ongol, wherein fibrous dysplasia is defined as an asymptomatic regional alteration of the bone in which a normal architecture is replaced by the fibrous tissue and non-functional trabeculae like osseous structure. Lesions may be monoostotic or polyostotic with or without associated endocrine disturbances. So the etiology is mainly uh, there is a mutation in the GNAS1 gene that is a guanine nucleotide binding protein alpha stimulating activity polypeptide wherein it can produce the cyclic amino monophosphate and then it leads to the overproduction of the CAMP in the affected sites. This can give rise to certain endocrine disorders such as that of precocious puberty, then the hypothyroidism, growth hormone as well as cortisol production and it can also cause certain melanin pigmentation such as that of coffee ole spots and this can also cause the differentiation of the osteoblast leading to a fibrous dysplasia. So the clinical types of fibrous dysplasia are the monostotic, polyostotic. In the polyostotic we have the Jaffe type as well as the Mekin Albright syndrome and then the craniofacial form. As mentioned in the monostotic, monostotic meaning that only one bone has been affected, whereas the polyostotic, many bones have been affected. In the Jaffe type is found to be accompanied along with the cafe or lace spots, and Mekin Albright syndrome is nothing other than a fibrous dysplasia which is found to be a severe form accompanied along with the pigmentation of the skin as well as endocrinal disturbances. And in the craniofacial form, there is an involvement of the maxilla as well as the adjacent bones along with it. In the monostatic form, the clinical features is mostly confined to one single bone. Then it is more found to be more common than the polyostotic and it is found to occur at the age of 20 to 30 years. Another gender predilection that is male is to female ratio is found to be 1 is to 1. And the most common sites of affected are the ribs, femur, tibia, maxilla and the mandible. And along with jaw bones, it is found to be the maxilla that is more uh, more found to be involved than that of the mandible and unilateral painless facial swelling has been observed especially there is an enlarging deformity in the alveolar process as you can see in the clinical presentation scene that is with the skeletal growth and completion and also teeth is found to be malanine or displaced in the polyostotic form that is a jaffe um, jaffe type or the mackin albright syndrome in the Jaffe type, you see along with it, there is a cafe alveolar pigmentation and macular albright is found to be comprising of the cafe alveolar pigmentation, polyostatic fibrous dysplasia, multiple endocrinopathies such as that of precocious puberty, goiter, hypothyroidism and acromegaly. The clinical features that you see is that in children is found to be affected less than 10 years of age and male is to female ratio is found to be 1 is to 3, so more of female predilection and there is also facial asymmetry seen. And there are certain pathological fractures with pain and deformity seen along with the long bone lesions. And there is something called as a hockey stick deformity that is seen along the length of the discrepancy that is involved in the upper portion of the femur. And cafe ole spots that are seen, that is a pigmentation that is observed around the trunk and the thigh region. It is found to be congenital and sometimes it resembles that of the map of the coastline of mean. So that is why the budget is found to be irregular. In the craniofacial form, it is found to be occurring in 10 to 25 percent among the patients in monostotic form and 50 percent among the polyostotic form. It is found to be occurring around the skull bones, especially it affects the maxilla and it may cross the sutures that is the sphenoid, zygoma, pharontodesal bones and as well as the base of the skull. 
there is hypertelorism cranial asymmetry facial deformity visual impairment exophthalmos blindness then the vestibular dysfunction tinnitus as well as hearing loss may be observed the radiographic features that are seen is then once you're trying to interpret the radiographic features it's always best to interpret in the in this form that is the location it is found to be operated most commonly around the posterior aspect and it is a unilateral presentation periphery is found to be ill defined it is gradually blending with the normal trabecular bone and then the internal structure is found to be that early onset is found to be single or multiple symmetrical or asymmetrical radial lucency with ill defined borders so the four patterns that is the ground glass appearance the cotton wool appearance and then the orange peel and also fingerprint pattern the effects on the surrounding tissues such that it causes something known as the endosteal scalloping that is there is slow resorption of the endosteal surface and then the periosteum is found to be smooth these are the series of radiographs that are taken for each pattern that is a fingerprint pattern then the ground glass appearance and then cotton wool as well as the orange peel appearance this is also a presentation of a ground glass appearance that you can see and also there is buccocortical buccolingual expansion that is seen cortical plate expansion that has been observed the differential diagnosis that can be enlisted are the juvenile ossifying fibroma cementitious dysplasia pagets disease hyperparathyroidism cementoma cherubism chronic sclerosing osteomyelitis osteogenic sarcoma and periapical cemental dysplasia management is first and foremost we go to the four categories that is first is the observation and then the medical therapy and then followed by the remodeling that is through the surgery intervention and then the radical excision and the reconstruction has been done next question that can be asked as a short note is the cafe au lait spots it is nothing other than a macular irregular melanin pigmentation that is seen around the skin then cafe au lait may resemble that of coffee with milk appearance and is found to be associated with syndrome such as that of jaffe stripe albright syndrome mycosis neurofibromatosis type 1 and nunan syndrome so it's found to be a solitary idiopathic multiple and it's also found to be genetic disorder and uh, the genetic cafe au lait spots is melano bacillus melanosus without a concomitant increase in the number of melanocytes next question that can be asked is a periapical cemental dysplasia It is formerly known as cementoma, and is found to be associated with the vital mandibular anterior teeth is where it has been affected, and it's found to be asymptomatic and does not require any treatment. It initially it starts off with the radial lucens, eh, which is almost similar to that of how you see in a periapical granuloma or a periapical abscess, and then leads to in the mature stage it tries to increase its radio density when it becomes a becomes more radio opaque. macken albright syndrome it is found to be a polyostotic fibrous dysplasia type wherein there are a few characteristics such as that of cafe au lait skin pigmentation then the precocious puberty as well as endocrinopathies it is found to be occurring due to the mutation of the gs alpha gene that is gnas1 gene has been affected as i already mentioned there is a classical triad that is precocious puberty cafe au lait spots as well as polyostotic fibrous dysplasia and the treatment is found to be a multidisciplinary approach next chapter is about the sexually transmitted diseases in that the most favorite question be asked is the oral manifestations of hiv this has already been enlisted in uh, anil gomes textbook as well as in ravikara dongol itself wherein is divided into three groups that is group 1 2 and 3 that is lesions that are associated with hiv and then group 2 is the lesions which are less commonly associated with hiv and then three is lesions that are seen in hiv cases so these are the enlisted manifestation that you see under each group in the next short question that can be asked is the laboratory diagnosis of hiv so this is what how it has been enlisted that the screen test has been done as well as supplementary test and then the non specific test these are the tests that has been enlisted for the laboratory diagnosis of hiv next chapter is about forensic dentistry bite marks is the favorite question to be asked not only in uh, old pathology even in our old medicine paper also at times they ask a short note of bite marks so it, it is defined as that of the mark that is caused by the tooth either alone or in combination with other mouth parts 
and it is classified based on the agents such as that of human and the animal and the materials that have been used that is skin body tissue food stuff and also other materials investigations is used for the preliminary questions have been asked by the forensic dentologist and then we take the bite mark evidence from the collection from the victim and then followed by the from the suspect and then case demographics have been taken visual examination of how the bite mark has been presented and then the photography that is like black and white as well as normal alternate light photographies have been taken up and then salivary swab collection has been done and impressions are taken followed by the same evidence collection from that of the suspect next question to be asked is keloscopy or lip prints that is the wrinkles that are seen are visible on the lips which is the uh, keloscopy that is what is the examination that has been called for checking the lip prints there are it's been classified in such way that there's simple wrinkles as well as compound wrinkles and the simple you have straight line curved line angled line and the sign shaped curves in the compound you have bifurcated trifurcated and the anomalous next question that can be asked is about the panoramic radiography in assessment of age estimation in the forensic investigations so based on the opg mehran we have certain investigations such as that of the demerian's method and also we have certain uh, values that have been taken up for each of these assessment so you can go through this in uh, also in the textbook of uh, whole medicine and radiology that is by ravikiran ongol and also in anil bom they have given about it the demergence method so you can en uh, enlighten about it so you can highlight about the demergence method that has been utilizing the panoramic radiograph wherein you assess the uh, age estimation in such cases keloscopy is the examination of limb prints so it deals with the forensic investigation technique with where it deals with the identification of human based on the lip traces and it aims on the uniqueness of each lip prints which can help in identification of each personally and these are the types that you can see that's the type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 and the type 5 that has already been given in the textbook of oral pathology also it's there under forensic chapter it's there in uh, shafers and also you can read about it in the ongol textbook palatal rugen forensic investigation that is the ridges that are seen on the anterior part of the palatal mucosa is found to be unique for each individual there are three types that is the primary secondary and the fragmentary rugen so based on the millimeters of the diameter you can take it under consideration the classification for each palatal rugen age estimation that has been used using the teeth that is morphohistological this is duftensen's method wherein it estimates the attrition of the enamel secondary dentin deposition followed by recession of the predon ligament for then the cementum apposition root resorption and the dentin translucency and then also you can examine through radiological that is previously already mentioned as a panoramic using the demergence method and then you have the biochemical investigations for age estimation of this teeth next question that can be asked is the dental identification in mass disasters so one and first and foremost you have to recover the bodies from the disaster site and then the post mortem examination is done at the mob and then you collect the anti mortem dental records and followed by comparison with the computer software to find the previous data of the person so the post mortem examination it's the presence or the absence of the teeth as well as any crowns or fillings that have been seen and also examination of any erupted or an erupted tooth or any sockets that are present or healed as such a post extraction or so and then you take photographs and x-rays to be taken for this post mortem patient then we go about taking the photographs and x-rays in the post mortem examination next is anti mortem examination wherein if the body is known for having the red dental records these have been recovered from the dentist if unknown examination results in a submit in then it is been submitted to a missing person registry next is the question that is asked of the use of the dental radiography in forensic investigations we have certain um, methods such as that is the moore's method the demergence method for age estimation that has been evaluated and by using the calcification of the tooth deposition of uh, secondary dentin in terms of the uh, pulp chamber you can uh, check about the gustafsons method and uh, this 
द डी मेरिजेंस मेथड यू फाइन टू इवेल्युएट द एज ऑफ ईच दर इज अ फीमेल एज अ वेल एज अ मेल बेस्ड ऑन द हाउ मच इज द कंप्लीशन ऑफ द रूट एफेक्ट्स और द कैल्सिफिकेशन दैट इज बीन ऑब्जर्व इन ईच टेन स्टेजेस थैंक यू फॉर द सेशन एंड वील बी कंटिन्यू इन द नेक्स्ट सेशन अबाउट द ओरल रेडियोलॉजी डिस्कशन